Hey there guys, how are you going? Uh, so if you've seen from the notices, the game is about to go into version 2.5.0 and what that is going to bring is it's going to bring what is known as a low quality mode into the game. The main idea behind that being if you have a phone or a device that isn't really the best at running uh, running the game when there are like lots of enemies on the screen at the same time or enemies with lots of moving parts for example or even just you know running around the field and you just sort of lose frame rates and it has a hard time this could be the update for you uh, it'll re-download the game in what is known as low quality mode where all of the textures are a little bit lower quality all of the models are a little bit lower quality and hopefully this will improve the performance for your game so uh, I might check it out when it comes out I don't know if I want to <laughs> re-download the entire game but I might find a spare phone that doesn't run quite as well and try to run it on that. Uh, the other update added into 2.5.0 is the option to have what is known as like, uh, you can use the Nova attack while you're in auto mode. So as you know from auto mode right now, uh, whenever you press the automatic button, it just fires off the metal special attacks if the game is able to, like if you make the current requirements, like your SP is full enough, etc. Um, but unfortunately right now we can't use the Nova attack unless we turn auto off and then use it and then turn it back on. So this update is going to add in the ability to use the Nova attack while we're in auto. So basically if we press the Nova button while the special attacks are firing off, it should cue the Nova attack to be the very next attack that it fires off. So definitely a nice little improvement, one that makes a lot of sense and I'm very happy to see it. But this got me thinking, you know, what sort of improvements would I like to see in the game? If I had my way, what would I change about it? So I've come up with a <laughs> bit of a clickbaity list here and we're going to go over some of the top things that I would like to see added to future updates in the game. So, number one. Okay, this is a very, very, very common suggestion people always have when talking about improvements of the game. I want to see all the skills that we have be able to be stacked. So, multiple copies of Paralysis, stack them together. Multiple copies of Attack Boost 2, stack them together. Anything that is the same, like looks exactly the same. Like let's say we have a 5-star copy of Poison, stack it together with other 5-star copies of Poison. Maybe have that separate to 3-star copies of Poison, but whatever. If it's the same looking metal, that should be able to be stacked. That should go completely without saying. And I honestly can't believe it hasn't been added into the game at this point. Um, I definitely think this is a very easy thing to implement given that the stacking system is already pretty profound and is able to do lots of things. So, sure, it wouldn't take too much to uh, add it to the skill system as well. Number two, so keeping with uh, the skill system, I'd love to see the ability to evolve skills. So let's say we have a copy of Attack Boost 2. We get them from the Colosseum every month, but to be honest, at this point in the game, there's really nothing we can do with them. I love to be able to combine, let's say, three copies of Attack Boost 2 to get an Attack Boost 3. And then let's say we can combine a few copies of Attack Boost 3 and get an Attack Boost 4 and so on and so forth. I love to be able to fuse an Attack Boost 4 with a stock standard Lux Boost skill and get an Attack Boost 4 with Lux Plus. I think there's really, really some really strong potential here to have a bit of fun with the skills. Like, again, older ones are basically useless right now. They have featuring avatar boards returning, but it's like, well, you're literally just buying them for completion's sake at this point. You know, the skills inside are, are basically worthless. So I think this would be a really cool way of making those boards worth it again in some sense. I mean, you still hopefully keep the cheaper price uh, because you'd have to do the work of evolving them yourself. And obviously there'd be... They'd have to be very, very careful not to de-incentivize purchasing future avatar boards, but I think it'd be really, really cool to evolve these skills and, you know, make them useful again. Okay, number three. This is the one I could see probably taking the most work to implement, but I think it'd really, really, really improve the quality of life for a lot of players. I would love to be able to have, once a skill has been used on a particular medal, and this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated, I'm talking about one particular medal. If that's had a skill used on it in the past, I would love to have some sort of skill bank where you've already used that skill once. If you decide to use a different skill on that, for example, you can then switch back and forward. Like let's say, for example, I use a medal as a Lux rating medal, and I have a Attack Boost 4 max and Lux plus on that medal, for example. But then I want to go to Colosseum, and you know, I really like that medal for Colosseum as well. I would love to be able to switch between Attack Boost 4 max with Lux plus and Attack Boost 5 max, where I don't need any Lux in the Colosseum, I just want to crank out as much damage as possible. I would love to be able to switch over to Attack Boost 5 max and do a bit more damage. Now, the reason I don't think this is ever going to happen is because uh, obviously they want to encourage you to have lots of different kinds of the same metal. They would love for you to re-roll and re-roll and purchase and purchase and purchase over and over again until you have, let's say, a Final Form Sora that has uh, three lots of plus, uh, plus 40 damage and raids on it and therefore you put your attack boost 4 max and Lux plus on that one and then have a separate copy of uh, Sora that has, let's say, negative ground defense and negative aerial defense and plus a thousand strength. Now obviously that is completely out of range for a normal player just because you simply aren't going to pull that much. 
but for the really top tier of players, and you know who I'm talking about, that is a possibility. You know, you could pull and pull and pull and pull and pull, and eventually have several different copies of the medal. So I don't think it's ever going to happen, but for <laughs> the free-to-play players like myself, I think that'd be a really, really cool update. Alrighty, in keeping with things that I think will never happen, but I would love to see happen, especially as a free-to-play player, I would love to see the trade system completely and utterly overhauled. Every single time you fuse the same metal into itself, I want that trait to be unlocked permanently in that particular metal's trait library. So let's say for example I go into my metal list right here and I pull up Simba. This is what I want it to look like. I want to be able to see every single trait that I've ever unlocked for Simba before. And therefore when I go to a fresh copy of Simba, now let's put some restrictions on it. Let's say you can only do this with metals that are fully gilted and obviously have had that trait slot unlocked. So let's say I go to Simba right now and I can pick from any of the traits that I've ever had on him before. Um, let's say for a medal that has three different trade slots, I can go onto that medal and so long as I fully guilted it and have actually unlocked trade slot 1, 2 and 3, for any of those slots I should be able to pick which trait I want in that slot so long as I've unlocked it in the past. So let's say we want to switch from a fully raiding medal to a fully coliseum heavy medal. Um, I should be able to go in there and let's say I've unlocked the damage and raids trait before, pick damage and raids for trade slot 1, 2 and 3. Or let's say I want to go into Colosseum, let's say I want to have negative ground, enemy defense minus 60, and then a, a thousand strength and a thousand strength. You know, why not? And again, obviously this is counterintuitive to what Square Enix wants. They want us to be able to pull and pull and pull and have tons of copies of the same metal with all different trade setups. But I mean, that doesn't really work with the random nature of trades at the moment. If we could somehow influence that, I'd be more on board with their idea. But I mean, just the very fact that it's so random is exactly what they want. They want players that will do, uh, do 20 poor mercies on a Shion banner, for example, to have something to do with all these premiums that they're going to get. And, you know, <laughs> it makes total sense that they want to have, you know, this random nature because if, you, if you're if you able to have, let's say, 12 different copies of HD like scene combined and then you never ever need another one ever again, would you? You'd, you'd honestly never need it again. Um, and therefore, it would finally be bad to see it. They don't want ever. They don't want ever have that situation appear where it's actually bad to see a metal popping up. So, I mean, I understand that they're a business trying to make money, and if the very top players are going to be the ones paying for it, then you want to keep them paying for it, I suppose. So, um, but for us down on the bottom here, it's something that I'd really, really like to see improved. So, hopefully, you guys understand what I mean by this, and hopefully, the restrictions that I put on it make it actually feasible because I think this could happen in the future. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit optimistic here, but I think this could definitely happen one day. So fingers crossed, hopefully it does. Okay, for number five, this is the one last thing I'll mention about skills, and this is a very, very, very tiny one. Um, I think we're at the point of the game now where it should be like attack boost four max and SP gauge one or two or even zero appearing in the avatar board that comes with the gems. Uh, this is a very tiny thing, obviously, but I think we're at that point of the game where no one's using attack boost three max anymore. This is a really, really short one, so I'll move on to number six. Okay, number six. So this one I was doing a little bit of research for before, and that's what actually inspired my last video where I made that spreadsheet, and I can link that video in the description. But basically, I want to see tier fours removed from the pool system. So not necessarily all the pool system, like you, can, you should still be able to pick them up as a random additional medal. But we're at the point now where I don't think any tier fours are really worth using anymore. In fact, there are several tier threes that are probably better than it that have come along as, you know, event medals or just random pullable medals. Um, it's time they went, definitely went from the falling price EX banners, definitely went away from that because it would at least soften the blow for people that did, you know, <laughs> 15 or so pulls on a falling price EX banner, didn't get the featured medal, and also got a bunch of garbage. It's, it's really horrible for them when that happens. At least, I mean, it, it probably encouraged people to pull a little bit more, right? Because right now, if there's a 30% chance of you getting a tier four, it's like, well, I mean, I could not only not get the, pre the featured medal, but I've also got a pretty decent chance of getting a handful of garbage. So um, I definitely think that should be removed from the, like, the guaranteed side of things. And again, but keep them in, you know, the other nine medals that aren't guaranteed premiums, I reckon, should still have a chance of being tier fours just because, well, how else are you going to complete the collection? But definitely, it shouldn't be the only reward that you get from doing a pull. Okay, next is number seven. Alrighty, speaking of completing the collection, I would love for there to be some way of getting high score challenge medals, even if you missed them the first time. I would love for, let's say, brand new accounts that are being re rolled or 
you know, brand new players that never had a chance to earn them in the first place. But I would love for there to be some system in the game that lets you re-earn past high score challenge medals. Now I know that's tried this in the global version once, where they tried to do a banner, but obviously it was not very successful at all because people didn't buy it and it hasn't come back since. I think the reason for that is because, well, quite frankly, they're not useful anymore. You know, those were tier four and I think even tier five medals back then that appear in that in that uh, high score challenge reprint banner. But we were up to tier sixes at that point. And going forward, there's really never going to be an opportunity to use past high score challenge medals again. Now, I know that not all of their value comes from how useful they are. A lot of it comes from the exclusivity factor. You know, a lot of the top paying payers, sorry, top paying players of this game are not paying just because they're going to be useful, but also because they're going to have them and no one else will. And I fully understand that that's some of the value behind them. But I think, you know, let's say, okay, let's say you have an event and that event comes out roughly a year after the initial high score challenge. So it's a long, okay, maybe, maybe six months, but after a period of time in which that medal is no longer useful in the game, you, like you wouldn't want to use that ever in the game anymore. Why not have an event that lets you re-earn that high score challenge medal? I think that's a pretty good compromise. It's like, um, hopefully the top tier players know that they had the original copy, they were able to use them when they were fresh and brand new, and it lets old players, well, sorry, new players or players that missed them the first time, still able to get them. And again, you wouldn't want to use, like maybe even only one copy, just to fill up the album. And maybe you can't guilt it without spending a lot of Mickey and Brooms, and you never ever have traits on it, which is why. Okay, yeah, okay, like why not that? Why not have no way of earning traits on it, just because, you know, that way at least you can have the exclusivity factor back from the people that paid to earn them the first time. Um, again, I speak as someone who's a really, really big collector, and even in digital games like this, it does annoy me that my album isn't fully complete, so that could just be <laughs> that side of me talking here, but I think a lot of players would agree that High School Challenge medals are pretty cool, and I love a way to earn them in my game, so next part. Okay, so that'll probably do it for me, but I am really, really curious to see... <clears throat> Alrighty, that'll probably do it for me, but I am really, really curious to hear what your opinions are. Like, what changes would you like to see in the game? Um, there's definitely stuff that you may disagree with from my list, and you'd like to see in yours instead. Um, but either way, let me know what you think, and uh, let's all look forward to the future of this game in 2018. So thanks for listening, guys, and I'll talk to you later on. All the best. Bye!